Well, hello everybody and welcome to this week's Pastors Weekly Address, the first Pastors Weekly Address of uh, the uh, this new idea. We'll see, I, I know, I know, we'll see how long it lasts. But I felt like it was a good idea to uh, jump into this with um, some information, some encouragement. And it's very simple with the app, of course, with uh, the streaming, just like we do on the weekends and on Wednesday. So I wanted to go ahead and uh, welcome you to a Monday. I know I'm the same way. Mondays sometimes for many are... Uh, are tough to be uh, involved with. They're tough to, uh, to to look forward to in some ways, uh, especially if you've enjoyed a nice weekend uh, and uh, you just kind of want to relax a little bit more. But this is a, it's a Monday, and so if you're working today, uh, welcome to Monday. Uh, if you're not working today, welcome to Monday too. We're going to open up this morning with the Proverbs 10, and one of the things I like to encourage you to do is go through the Proverbs daily and just you pick the corresponding chapter to the corresponding date. So today is the 10th, so we're going to do Proverbs 10. And it's interesting that we're in Proverbs 10 uh, because Proverbs 10 is the beginning of a 15 chapter or a 5 chapter rather versus uh, chapters 10 through 15 uh, that is that it changes from the first 9 chapters of Solomon's Proverbs. In 10 through 15, it's really these chapters are really dominated by what is called antithetical parallelism. And that just means, that's just a fancy way of saying that a statement is made in line one and then it's contrasted in line two. So you have, you have contrasting going on in the next five chapters. Uh, chapters 16 through 22 are a little bit different. They use both synonymous and synthetic parallelism, which is something that we'll address next time because we'll be in, I guess, we'll be in uh, number 17, chapter 17, next Monday as we do these daily together. So I encourage you to do these daily, and here's what you do. You take it, you read it, and then uh, you just write down the, the verse within the chapter that the Lord, you feel, is, is leading you to uh, really focus on, and then you observe what's going on in that chapter, and then or in that verse, rather. Uh, don't try to apply it yet. Just observe what's being said, and then after you observe that, uh, then you apply it. What's the application for your life? What, what specifically is God revealing to you through this part of His Word? And, uh, and then you have prayer time, which you ask for God to help you apply that to your life. So this morning, I'm going to read. I love to read out of the voice. The voice is uh, very similar in its makeup to the message, which is uh, it's um, a, a, a synopsis or... Uh, it's not parenthetical, but it, uh, the word escapes me at this moment. But anyhow, it is, um, it is just really a, um, a kind of a, uh, the word, oh man, this is going to bother me now. If I'm saying that I am, uh, I am putting this into my own words, then I'm paraphrasing. It's a paraphrase. I had to go through that to get it. It's a paraphrase of, of the actual manuscript. So there will be some differences, but uh, I like reading out of the voice. Uh, I don't necessarily study out of the voice, although I, it does have some good uh, notes and side uh, comments, but I like to read. Um, and uh, let's see here. I'm being told that you can't hear me, that it's too low. Maybe you're just used to me screaming all the time. <laughs> let's see here. We'll play a little bit with this and see if this is any better. How is that any better? I know that we've got somebody sending me a message saying that they can't hear, so uh, I'll, I'll try to speak up a little bit. I am used to, to, you know, normally I'm yelling right into this thing, so I will speak up a little bit, and, uh, and hopefully that'll sound better. The, uh, anyway, the, the, the proverb, uh, is, the voice is more of a, um, a paraphrased version, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to, I'm going to read this to you. And again, if you're reading in Proverbs 10 with a different version, it'll sound different, but just uh, enjoy listening. The Proverbs of Solomon, chapter 10. A wise son makes his father glad, but a foolish one fills his mother with sorrow. Riches gained through dishonest means will eventually vanish, but doing what is right avoids a deadly consequence. The eternal does not allow the right living to go hungry, but he will frustrate the plans of the wicked. A slack hand produces nothing but poverty, but an industrious hand soon takes hold of its riches. A wise son stores up for the winter months while it is still summer, but a shameful son lies around even during the harvest. Blessings come to those who do what is right, but words spoken by the wicked cover up violent schemes. 
The memory of one who lived with integrity brings joy, but the legacy of the wrongdoer will rot away. The wise at heart will gladly obey direction, but the one who fills the air with meaningless talk will fall into ruin. The path of integrity is always safe, but a person who follows a crooked way will be exposed. Whoever winks his eye signals trouble, and whoever fills the air with meaningless talk will fall into ruin. The mouth of the righteous is a spring of life, but words spoken by the wicked cover up violent schemes. Hatred fuels dissension, but love calms all rebellions. Wisdom lives where insightful words are spoken, but harsh punishment awaits the senseless. The wise store up knowledge as a safeguard, but the meaningless chatter of fools means that chaos is near. The wealth of the rich is their powerful fortress. The poverty of the poor reduces them to rubble. The reward of those who do it right is satisfied life, but the profits gained by those who do wrong is used to sin. Those who accept instruction are travelers on the road to a meaningful life, but those who refuse correction wander off and pave a path to ruin. Lips that lie cover deep-seated hatred, and whoever spreads a libelous rumor is acting as a fool. Or libelous, right? Yeah, libelous. (laughs) The more you talk, the more likely you will cross the line and say the wrong thing. But if you are wise, you'll speak less and with restraint. Ooh, verse 19, that's big to me. The speech of those who do right is of greater value than the finest silver, but the thoughts of the wrongdoers are worthless. And the last, uh, oh, not yet, I'm sorry, we've still got some more to go. The right living teach many, but fools die with no clue how to live well. Verse 22, the blessing of the eternal is what makes someone rich, and he doesn't add pain to it. Mischief is the sport of fools, but wise actions brings joy to a person with insight. Whatever wrongdoers fear the most will happen to them, but those who do right will receive what they long for. After the storm passes, the wrongdoers are blown away, but those who do right are safe and sound on their firm foundations forever. As vinegar vexes the teeth, and as smoke irritates the eyes, so a slacker annoys his boss. I like that. Reverence for the eternal makes for a long and peaceful life, but a wrongdoer will have years taken away. The hope of those who do right is joy and celebration, but the only prospect for those who do wrong is futility. The way of the eternal offers safety to those who love justice, but it destroys those who who perpetrate evil. The right living will never have their land taken away, but wrongdoers will be uprooted. Wisdom flows from the mouths of those who do right, but tongues that twist the truth will be cut out. The lips of the right living understand what is proper, but the mouths of the wrongdoers twist and pervert the truth. Dishonesty in business disgusts the eternal, but fair dealings delights him. And actually, I think I might have gone on to 11.1 there. But anyhow, so you get the, the idea here in the 10th chapter, uh, which begins the compare and contrast. Uh, you know, the, 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 if you do this, then good things happen. But if you do this, bad things happen. That's kind of the, the contrasting, for the most part, that's going on over the next five chapters of Proverbs. So, the, so here's what you do. If you're, if you're jotting this down, there may be a different one that sticks out to you. The one that stuck out to me was verse 20 that said, uh, the speech, or excuse me, uh, let's see here, it was verse 19 that said, the more you talk, the more likely you will cross the line and say the wrong things. But if you're wise, you'll speak less and with restraint. Man, that has been my problem over, over probably my adult life has been not saying too much. Sometimes we, uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, it's a desire to fit in or be a part of a group or maybe it's just always being on, on the quote unquote stage. And so it's kind of always having to fill that dead air time or, or what it is. But, and it may be a combination of all those. But what I ends up happening uh, is I end up seeing the, 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 right now is I end up seeing that as a, a thing, a warning to me, an exhortation to me from God. So, uh, what I would do is write down verse 19 in my journal. And then I would observe, simply observe what's, do not apply this yet. Observe what's going on. The more you talk, the more likely you will cross the line and say the wrong things. But if you're wise, you'll speak less and with your stain. So what's going on? There's a warning going on that the more someone talks, the more likely they will cross the line and say the wrong things. But if they're wise, 
they'll speak less and with restraint. So it's very simple to just observe what's happening. The application may not be as easy to put into words, but it's very easy to uh, identify if you think about the fact that the reason it sticks out to you is because you feel there's an application to your life. And that's, the, that's the aha moment. So here we are with verse 19. And, and again, I've already shared the application for me, but I would then again uh, write down the application that the more I talk, the more Chester talks in a conversation or a situation, the more likely he is or the more likely I am to cross the line and say the wrong things. But wise, wise is Chester if I speak less and with restraint. So it's the whole think before you speak kind of idea. And so then my prayer would be something along the line of, uh, Father, this day help me to speak less and listen more that I might say the right things with wisdom. You know, something like that. So that would be the prayer I would jot down in my journal. And then, and then I would pray that throughout the day, just in, in some form or fashion as, I'm, as, it, as the Lord brings it to my mind, as, he, as I think about it, I, I would spend time praying over that. Um, and the, the one of the nice things about journaling is that you can write it down so, uh, and go back and look at it later. So that's our proverb for today. And uh, to, uh, next week on the uh, Monday uh, address, we'll talk about Proverbs 17. We're going to have a word of prayer in a moment. Uh, before we do, I do want to update you on announcements. Some of you are unable to be here. Some of you may have left your bulletins. Some of you uh, just may have forgotten. And, and, and in whatever the case may be, I want to make sure... Uh, that you get the announcements. If through the second quarter, we're collecting toiletries for God's storehouse in the Jesus Inn. We've gotten a great response to that, but it kind of tapered off, which is to be expected uh, over the course of a quarter uh, of three months. But we would like to encourage you that when you're at the store, just to pick up an extra thing, a toothpaste or deodorant or whatever you think would be appropriate that falls in the, uh, under the category of toiletries for the folks from the Jesus Inn and God's Storehouse. Uh, and there is a box in the hub, uh, in, in the lobby, as you come through, right to cross from the hub table. So you can drop that in there. Uh, we do, if you want to deliver it during a time during the week, as long as someone's up here at the church. If not, best thing to do, people do this a lot, just hang it on the door that leads into the Jordan Ansley, uh, into the building, into the administration building. Uh, that's usually a good idea. Usually it's out of the eyesight and nobody ever messes with things. Uh, like that. So uh, don't hang it on my door because then it has complete street view and everybody can see it hanging there. Uh, But we'll we'll add it to the box and that'll be fine. Um, And we'll take those down as we fill the box. We'll take them down there so that they have the uh, supplies. Uh, I want to remind you, regular updates from the church. There's so many ways to be updated. If you're listening on the app, you obviously got the app message and that's acceptable. If you you don't want to use the Remind 101, the app message for the most part and very hopefully in the near future will be increased uh, so that every message that goes out on Remind 101 will also in some form go out on the app. We're limited to text, much more so on the app because of the way it appears on your phone. But um, Remind 101, if you want to uh, get the regular updates from Remind 101, just text the word at, the symbol at, SSBC events. So SSBC events. And if you text that to number 8101. 81010. So that's 81010 or 81010 or however you want to do that. Uh, then you can get that. And, uh, and, and these will be, these are not news based stories like the app has. These are going to be more of updates. Don't forget to bring your toiletries, things like that. Um, I want to congratulate Damian Edwards on his profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and his public baptism on Sunday, yesterday. Uh, Damien, that's awesome, man. We're excited to have you as part of the family of God and have you and your family here at Smith Street Baptist Church. Uh, If you missed it yesterday, great news on the park. We are um, we are closey, closey, closey to getting uh, the park. We're not. We don't want to stop at five thousand dollars. If people want to continue to give, because we do have a lot of work to do and we have a very short amount of time to do it. But uh, we are already because of some generous gifts at four thousand four hundred and five dollars. That's when wonderful. Smith Street ought to be excited. Ought to be proud. Uh, pleased uh, with that, uh, $4,405. $4, so to get to our goal, we're only $595, and we've only done that, I think, three weeks, maybe four weeks. So that's pretty good, pretty good. Now, we've had some substantial gifts as well. And to all those who've given anything, thank you, because every little bit counts. Five bucks here, ten bucks there really does make a big difference uh, over if everybody does that. So we're at 595 left. You can give on the app if you'd like to. Just uh, You may want to let me know uh, with a text or a phone call if you're going to give on the app. We have a lot of people paying for VBS t-shirts on the app. 
Uh, we have a lot of people paying for uh, uh, giving other special offerings on the app. So just to make sure it goes to the right place, if you give through the app, you may want to just shoot me a message and let me know so I can let Miss Martha know when she does the financials so that it goes to the right place. And so you get tax credit for it as well. Um, next week, we're going to be doing the uh, Armor of God. So I encourage you to read Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 this week and be prepared for the sermon on uh, the armor of God. Okay, a couple quick things that we've got coming up today that I'm going to update you on the survey, and then we're going to pray and we'll be done. The uh, Important to note that we have a called conference coming up at 7 p.m. from the Finance Committee, um, and we are um, going to uh, hold that at 7 o'clock. If there is not a lot of discussion, then we will go to our regularly, regularly scheduled uh, prayer meeting and sermon time. But uh, recognize, if you're listening on the app Wednesday night, that the conference will not be streamed, and so we will be late joining uh, the app on Wednesday night because of conference. Uh, so you'll just kind of have to keep checking back with, uh, with the app to make sure that, that you get in there. Uh, youth and children's services will not be affected by that. They will go on as normal. Today we'll have a financial stewardship co committee meeting uh, at 2 o'clock. We'll also have a personnel meeting at 2 o'clock. They're going to meet together and uh, get some things ready for Wednesday night. Church council is going to meet tonight at 6.30, so if you have anything you want to take before council, get it to us so the council can look at it, uh, address it, and, uh, and, and give it its due diligence before tonight at 6.30. And I believe that's it. Let me update you real quick on uh, the survey. I've sent out the survey about four days ago. We've gotten 16 results back in. Just sent this out through email, so if you didn't get it and you want to take it, you need to contact me so I can get you the link, or if you lost the link, so I can send it to you. Just let me know. But give me a call up here at the church, 537-8661. Uh, but we've had 16 uh, responses so I'm going to give you the percentage breakdowns on these uh, three questions uh, that were asked, just so you kind of know where the results are uh, so far. Uh, the question said on uh, the first question said, "Do you regularly attend Wednesday night services at Smith Street?" And uh, 81 and a 81 and a quarter percent said that they do attend Wednesday regularly services or uh, Wednesday services regularly. 18.75 um, percent said they don't. Uh, so really those numbers come down to 13, said they do, 3, said they don't. Um, of those 16 responses, the question, should Smith Street continue to have Wednesday night services? Uh, we had about 12, about 75% say yes. Uh, no one said no. Two people said on special occasions, and two people said use Wednesday night for youth, children, music, choir, band, etc., practices, things like that. So that kind of broke down with the majority going towards continue the Wednesday night services. And um, I thought this was funny. Should Smith Street, I just threw this in there to see what you thought. Should Smith Street no longer have Wednesday night services but go back to Sunday night instead? And 100% um, of the respondents, all 16 respondents so far, said no, 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 no. So you're enjoying your Sunday nights. So if you haven't taken the survey, it is anonymous, and I would love to, to hear from you because it helps us kind of identify as we go forward what the majority of the church is feeling without going into these conferences like uh, is historically, um, it, it, historically done. We just want to get your opinion on it. It's very important for you to do it. Three questions take you just a couple minutes to do it. If you need the link, let me know. So I'm going to have a word of prayer with you, and then we're going to be done for this week's address. Uh, I'm sure that I'm leaving something out, uh, but uh, we will. Oh, yes, I am. I will be sending out the newsletter this week. I'm hoping to have it finished today. I will be sending out the newsletter this week through email. And um, we got a new addition to the newsletter. Mark Butler is doing some article write previews in the in the newsletter this this uh, starting this month. So that's exciting. Um, and we may it looks like we'll have all the financial stuff ready to go for uh, the newsletter today. So hopefully the newsletter will be sent out today in the email. If you're not getting that, you need to let me know so we can email you and add you to the email list. All right. Let's have a word of prayer and then uh, I want to encourage you just to just to go today. Uh, if you remember the sermon from yesterday with that Yenoya that that uh, excitement, that passion, do what, um, do what you do today with passion and, and excitement and rejoicing for the Lord. Uh, do it with Unoya. So let us pray together. Father, thank you, God, for this time today. Thank you for the encouragement of your word, for the uh, truth contained from Genesis to Revelation for our lives. Thank you for those tuning into this, this um, address, whether they're tuning into it live or whether they're tuning into it at a later date. I pray, Father, that they will be encouraged to, to, from hearing this today, from hearing this right now at the moment they hear it, 
they will be encouraged to move forward uh, with Unoya. They'll be moving forward with passion, with, uh, with, with in, in excitement. And I just pray, Lord, that as we move forward in this day, we will do for you in ways that we've not done for you before. That, that we will uh, unapologetically proclaim your love and your mercy and your grace and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I pray for this church. I pray for a passion and a desire in the church to, to become involved, to not just be uh, hearers of the word as, as you have told us in, in uh, Paul's letter to Timothy, but that we are not to just be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word. And I pray, Father, for a passion. I pray for um, this summer as people are busy and gone and making decisions to be other places. I just pray that, that they make the right decisions. And if you have led them somewhere else for whatever reason, at a, at a day or a moment, then, uh, Lord, we pray for your will to be, continue to be done. But, uh, Father, when the enemy comes in and wants to tell everybody that they don't need to be in church or don't need to be together, um, the lies of the enemy, we just pray against them. So we thank you again for the tr- privilege, for the technology, for the opportunity, and we ask you to go with us this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's address. Let me know what you think. Uh, because it is important to me to know, not to be encouraged, although that is important, definitely, but be honest about it, because it is important for us to know uh, if this is something, it does take my time to prepare, and it does take my time to do it, and I want to make sure that it's blessing and benefiting you. So if you uh, are or are not, let me know. And uh, until next time, may God bless you, and I hope you'll come Wednesday night and be a part of what God is doing uh, at Smith Street. It's one hour. It won't take a whole lot of your time. I think you'll leave here with a much bigger blessing uh, than you'll expect. But if we don't see you this week, then we'll see you the next time the Lord brings us together. 